Hi everybody, we have a Labradoodle puppy litter update video for you today. Hi, I'm Claire from Vanna Labradoodles and please can excuse the construction noise in the background. That is our installer trying to get our kitchen cabinets finally installed. But our video is still going to go ahead and in today's video we're going to tell you all about these mini Australian Labradoodles, tell you about their milestones over the past week and also give you a little bit of an update on Belle and also talk to you a bit about getting a vet and a trainer. So the puppies are one week old today and as you can see we only have two little mini Labradoodle puppies in this litter. Our first born girl is this uh, caramel and white party girl and our second born is this beautiful frosty kind of caramel girl here. So there's just two of them at the milk bar that means there's not much competition, so they're gaining weight. You can see these nice, full, plump tummies that we have going on here. There's not a lot of argument over the milk bar, and there's certainly no shortage of supply from our beautiful Mama Labradoodle, Belle. So Belle's doing quite nicely. Uh, she's still a little bit, not, not exactly, terribly devoted to her puppies. She loves them, she cares for them, she absolutely does nothing wrong whatsoever, but she's also tremendously interested still in being with people. Now Belle is the type of dog who really gets all of her satisfaction and all of her joy in life from people. She would far rather be with people than anything else. And while she finds the other dogs, our dogs who live with us, uh, entertaining at times, she's not really keen on spending too much time with them. Mostly what she wants is for me to come and sit here in the whelping box all day and preferably all night with her. She really wants to be with her puppies and to spend time with her puppies but that competes with her desire to be with people and she's always trying to figure out how can I get the two things to happen simultaneously. So we give her lots and lots of breaks. We take her out more than we would most moms. Uh, she goes outside for far longer than most moms do when their little Labradoodles are only a week old. But uh, we want to work with Belle and what is, comes natural to her and keep her as happy as can be. Because you see these little puppies here, everything that they're getting into their bodies, all the messages that they receive come from Mama Labradoodle Bell. So it's very important at all times that our Mama Labradoodles be totally happy, content, relaxed, so that that all transmits through their bodies and that's all comes out through the milk and that's the message that these little Labradoodle puppies get right from day one. So the puppies are all, are all, all two of them are really doing just very well. They're quite a talkative group. Uh, they do talk to each other quite a lot. Of course, they're always sleeping together. They do everything together. Uh, you don't see the puppies separated from one another at all. And now Belle, you can see here at her milk bar, it's, there's absolutely nothing up here. She only has her back two teats and a little tiny bit of milk in these two in front of it, but these have nothing. So Mother Nature knew right from the get-go that there was no need for her to, produce, to be producing lots of milk. So it simply just did not put any milk into those uh, faucets there. So just back here, this is the only place where the babies nurse from. Uh, those are the two fullest hind teats there and they're just quite happy there. And you can see how they're nursing right now. You see Caramel Girl is not as frenetic or as enthusiastic as you sometimes see our little Labradoodles when they're nursing and they're really going at it. And that's because, again, there's just two of them. They don't have to work very hard. So they are having a very nice and easy beginning to their lives. Everything is all good. They've never had to worry about fighting off anybody or or competing for a spot at the milk bar. They've just always been able to go when they please and find a plentiful supply. And indeed, you'll see the caramel girl right now. She's not even nursing, probably because she's so full. So we'll take a look at the puppies now. 
and I want to show you something that's quite fun with each of them. Come on, little baby girl. This is our firstborn girl. There we go. And this is our little caramel party. You can see her pretty markings on her back there. And then you can see her beautiful markings on her beautiful little face. Very symmetrical markings, very even on her head. Very nice little way that her markings show up. And if you look really closely at the side of her eyes, you can see there's a little bit of a slit already. Now this is a week early for her eyes to be opening. Normally, if a, if a dog is early with opening their eyes, we see that happening around day 10. And these puppies are just seven days old uh, today. It is their one week birthday today. So to see those little tiny slits happening now is quite early. But again, we may see that these uh, puppies achieve several milestones a little bit early just because there is no competition. And you'll see the size of the paws on this girl. They're quite a good size. So I think this is going to be a very nicely sized little puppy. Probably just about the same as Belle. Uh, maybe a smidge bigger, but I, I doubt it. Probably going to mature to around 14 inches at the shoulder. And when we measure puppies, we measure from the ground to the top of their shoulder here. You can feel their shoulder in their bodies there to do that measurement. And it's right there where their uh, shoulder blade, if you will, shows up. And so you just take the measuring tape from the ground and up to here, and that tells you how high they are. You don't measure up to the top of their heads. So I would expect they're going to be around 14 inches, which is what Belle and Eli both are, and probably in the 18-ish pound range. Uh, they're just about exactly the same as, as Mama Belle. So this little lovey, she has more than doubled her birth weight since uh, she was born, and she is today weighing in at 464 grams. So she's already a pound, so that's just great. She's really doing very well. And you can see she's quite calm. She's quite content. She's not squirming around. She's not worried about anything. Uh, they do get handled a lot when there's only two. Uh, and because Belle really does like me to be in here quite a lot, they do get touched quite a bit. And at this point in time, we're doing our early neuro neurological stimulation which includes holding them upside down like this, and you can see that's no problem. It's not the puppy who's shaking, it's me. I have tremors in my hands. I'm not nervous, I just have that in my hands, so it's not the puppy. And then, oh yes, we have to have a sleep, it was exhausting. And then sometimes we'll put them upside down like this as well. So those are some of the things we do with them. And this little puppy, you can see her nose is starting to fill in. And if you've seen when she opens her mouth to yawn, she's also getting color on the inside of her lips. And you'll see there's a little bit of darkening here and here as well. So this puppy may end up being an apricot as opposed to a caramel. If her nose color comes in black, then she is an apricot. And that's possible because Papa Eli, he has a black nose. He's a cream, whereas Mama Belle has a rose-colored nose, so she's a caramel. So they look identical in terms of them both being white dogs, um, but the color of their leathers, that's what we call their foot pads, their nose, the, and their lips, uh, the color of their leathers is what determines the actual label we put on their color. So they look the same, but and the reason why we do that is to reflect what their their leathers are. So this little sweetheart, she may be going to fill in it with a black nose, or maybe it's going to be a, a brown nose. But I'm going to put my money on her becoming an apricot and having a little black nose. But as I said, you can see she's completely calm, relaxed trusting and you can see that Bell is entirely trusting as well. Bell doesn't care that I've got her up here in the air. She's not worried at all. She has absolute complete confidence that we are always looking after her babies. In fact, I think sometimes she would prefer if we would look after her babies. Right, Bell? Yeah, that would do just a funny girl. This is not uncommon for a first time mom. And it's no reflection on her mothering abilities and it has zero impact on the puppies. As you can see, they're, all, they're both completely content and very relaxed and happy puppies. Oh, here we have our second born little girl, our little dark cream girl. She isn't a cream, she is, I think, a caramel. Now again, she's starting to get some color around her nose. Not so much on her nose, but you can see that her 
paws are starting to get some color. They're not as pink as they were. Now whether this is going to be black or brown remains to be seen. At the moment it looks like it's brown, but if you look, I'll try and hold her the right way. Now Belle's getting a little worried because she can hear. This is the more talkative of the two. If you see under her chin there, if you see that color, uh, that looks to me like it's probably closer to brown than black. So I'm pretty sure she is a caramel. Lots of white on the chest on this girl. White on her legs too. So she is sort of marked uh, a bit like what we call tuxedo. She's not a tuxedo though. A tuxedo would have more white on the head, around the face, uh, and white around the, the neck here. But she does have lots of pretty white markings. It's going to set her color off really beautifully. And this little lady has also doubled her birth weight. So she's now 441 grams. So really 20 grams is almost nothing. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many grams is in an ounce, but uh, it's a very little weight difference. And you can see for her too, she's perfectly happy no matter what I do with her. I put her up high, move her around, put her with her head up, put her with her head down. And can you hear her grunting? I'll put her closer to my mic. Oh, of course, then she goes silent. <laughs> if you watch our Facebook page, though, there is a video of the puppies, and in that video, there's a period of a few seconds where they're making their noises, which are really sweet to listen to. They really do talk to each other quite a bit. I always find it really interesting how much puppies do communicate with noises when they can't hear anything. I mean, they're certainly unaware that they're even making a sound. So that's the little puppies. Oh, and then this one you can see too. There's not as much, but there is still a little tiny hint of a slit there in the eye. So I'm predicting that uh, we're going to see these eyes open a little earlier than normal. Now, if you can see here on Party Color Girl, she has a little bit of discoloration in her bum here. And that's because both of the puppies had a little bit of loose stool yesterday. And now why does that happen? Well, usually, well, not usually, always, what they're eating is what impacts how their digestive system works. So Belle had had more tripe yesterday than normal and the day before. Belle's being fairly difficult to feed and so I'm trying very hard to get um, as many good things into her as possible. And I'm using tripe to kind of bribe her into eating. Uh, she does like the tripe. However, by feeding her that extra bit of tripe, I ended up making her diet richer than what the puppies are used to and that ended up giving them a little bit of a loose stool. And so you can see Belle is very serious about attending to that um, and we fixed it really quite readily with our Benabac. Benabac is the probiotic we give the puppies. They do have that every day but I gave them an extra dose of it yesterday uh, just to help with the problem with the bums there and really it cleared it up very very quickly. So certainly it didn't uh, impact their weight gain at all. So now if you're one of the families on our list for this litter, now is a really good time for you to start looking for your vet if you don't have one already and thinking about your learning options with your puppy. So right now, vets are extremely maxed out. They are all having to do myriad more tasks uh, due to COVID, way more sanitation. They have to go outside to do some things. So there's a great deal more time involved with every visit with their clients. There's also a lot of people who added puppies to their families during COVID, and so their patient load is right at the max. It's extraordinarily difficult to locate a vet right now. Uh, and so while we usually suggest to everybody that you spend a good amount of time finding a vet, interviewing them, getting to know them, making sure that their philosophies match yours, now we suggest you start seriously looking to make sure you can find one just that will take you on as a new client if you don't already have a vet in place. Uh, very few cl uh, clinics are taking new clients, so you may have to go on a waiting list. And uh, since your puppy is going to be coming home with you in just a few weeks, you want to be sure that you have your vet lined up. Your vet is next to your breeder, your most important partner in your dog's life. 
uh, your vet is going to be who guides you on so many things, who cares for your baby should anything go wrong, and gives you all sorts of information and advice about their health and their well-being. So you really want to have one in that you have a good close relationship with. That's a relationship you really want to build strongly. Our vet clinic is amazing. We are so lucky. Uh, Cobble Hill Vet Clinic is our clinic and we are just so fortunate to have them. They do such a remarkable job and they really work so very hard. Uh, we appreciate them so much. And if you have a vet and you have a good relationship, show some love to them, say thank you, send them a card, get them a Tim Hortons gift certificate or Starbucks or send them some flowers, anything. Just show your appreciation and say thanks for working so hard for, for us and our dogs. And when we go to the vet with, uh, with the puppies and also with our dogs when they're older, you know, what do we do there? What are we looking for? So one of the first things that we always do is check the dog's ears. Now Labradoodles have floppy ears. They don't have standing up ears. So this means that moisture, humidity, bacteria is more readily trapped in their ears because the air doesn't get to them as much as it does in a breed of dog where their ears go up. Excuse me, Belle, I just want to borrow your ears. So you want to always every day be looking inside your dog's ears. Belle has beautiful, nice pink ears. They're all clean, there's nothing there. Now if you look right now, you can see they're a little bit greasy looking here. The reason for that is because she's uh, cleaning up the baby's bums all the time. I'm hand feeding her and sometimes she spits the food back out at me and we have to sort of roll it around in her mouth area before we finally get it to go down the right spot. Right, Belle? So you want to, you want to be, just hon move your head, honey. We just want to be able to see that the ear is pink and that inside here there's no guck. There's nothing building up and that everything looks good. You can put your finger just in and, oh, good, no smell. That means everything's fine. And you also want to get used to what does their ear feel like? It's always going to feel warm, but if it's really hot or if this is very bright pink or red or there's lots of gunk here or if this is really greasy, then you've got a problem. And if you smell anything, then you probably for sure have a problem and that's a vet visit. We don't always recommend, uh, well, in fact, we never recommend that you clean your dog's ears every day or even every week. Check them every day. Make sure they look like this. If you see anything starting to build up or any concern, then you want to give them a light wipe. Uh, we use an all-natural ear cleaner product. Uh, it's got lavender and witch hazel in it. And by the way, if you're a breeder and a new breeder, you don't want to use that when your dog is pregnant or lactating because witch hazel is contraindicated for pregnant and lactating dogs. But if you have a companion dog, and it's, it's all natural so it doesn't sting and it works with your dog's natural body. And you just do a very light clean on the outside and using a cosmetic pad, just go right in, just this far into their ear. You don't wanna be digging around or anything, just like you would with a child's ear. Very gentle, very careful. But the trick, then the most important part to remember is you clean this out and then you dry it and you dry it thoroughly because you don't want to be cleaning it and going, there you go, the ear's down, the moisture's trapped, and what are we going to get? An infection. We're going to get a bacterial infection from the moisture there. So you want to make sure it's very, very, very dry. Uh, one thing you can use that's readily available is Gold Bond Green Medicated Powder. Just use a very tiny, tiny little bit. You can just do a little sprinkle here, tiny bit there, and just do a little rub like this and then that will absorb any excess moisture. You also wanna be sure if your dog's swimming, if they're out in the snow, if they're out playing in mud puddles, if they're out in the rain, that you also do this and dry their ears when they come in because that's how you're going to get infections. So that's one of the things we do. And right now, because we had uh, snow on Vancouver Island, which is not normal, uh, we've got all sorts of dogs with ear infections as a result of that snow. Mm -hmm. So two of my dogs have ear infections right now because they're out in the snow and they're rolling around. They're having a great time. When they come in, they're head to toe soaking wet. You're drying them, but their ears are probably not drying out as well as they should. 
The other thing that lots of dogs have right now and something else you want to check is eye infections. So Labradoodles tend to have some glop in their eyes here. You can see Belle has just a tiny little bit. So all you just do is take that out with your fingers each day. If you want, you can uh, use, an, again, a nice little makeup pad and just give it a little wipe with just plain warm water. And then when you're doing this, you want to check their eye. Just open the eye up. Make sure that eyeball is white. If you see any redness there, and if you see any green glop or yellow glop coming out of their eyes, you probably have an eye infection. And again, you want to go to the vet and have that looked at. But that's all you have to do with, with their eyes. And then the other thing is their feet. We want to check their nails. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we want to check their nails. And you can see here on Belle's nails, these need to be clipped. So this is something I will make sure that I do uh, later today. So you can see the white, that's the dead part of the nail. The pink is where you don't clip. So we want to have those a little bit shorter. Nails that are too long can cause all sorts of issues with the gait for, for your dog and become very uncomfortable and cause them a great deal of pain in their back. So those are the three main things you want to do with your dog. And once these puppies have their eyes open, those are the things we'll do with them every day. Right now, we touch their ears, we touch their tail, we touch their feet, all their toes. They will have had their uh, nails clipped every three days for the whole time that they're nursing so they don't scratch on Bell. So they're used to that. And we, you know, we'll touch their eyes once they're open. We're not gonna touch their eyes, of course, when they're closed. So those are the sorts of things that uh, you can do at home to help take good care of your puppy. And uh, make sure you start looking for a vet now if you don't have one. And uh, you may even want to let them know that you're getting a puppy, the date you're getting a puppy, and start setting up those core appointments for vaccinations. Because sometimes right now, you can be waiting for two, three weeks to get an appointment because clinics are, as I said, just so busy. So next week when we do our video, we'll talk a little bit more about learning with your Labradoodle where we pretty much covered uh, all of our time for today and I don't want you all to fall asleep listening to me. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found that information helpful. If you have any questions about what you should check your dog or how to do it, uh, ear care products that we recommend, anything like that, feel free to just post that in the comments below. I'm always happy to uh, share any information and knowledge that I have with you. We hope you're subscribed to our channel and that you'll give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching our video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week. He's a baby. He's a beautiful baby's pal. He's a beautiful